and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. All right, welcome to it. Another episode of Podcast and Chillin'. Um, chilling with like Juice. Dude, you're like probably one of the coolest presenters of our generation. Oh, thank you so much. I don't take that lightly. I'll definitely take that compliment. Where Back is- in the day, I used to be very weird about compliments and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but now, yeah, man, I really appreciate it. And thank you because you are one of the most talented broadcasters yeah. our country also has. Yeah. So shout outs, my dude. Yeah. So on my way here, I was trying to count how many TV shows you've been on. Oh! I love <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I don't even want to go. Don't do not do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, like, what did you start? Street Journal? Street. I started at Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk, which one was that? The Basketball Show. Mm. That's actually where I started. I started as a commentator there. Mm. And then they said, no, man, you must come present the show and move to being on screen. Mm. You dress the part. You know the game. You talk the game. Uh, so do that. Then I moved to Cape Town and presented. Mm. Um, and then after that, uh, Joe Berg, Street Journal, Black Rage, Maria, Zeno, and Tuli saw me. And they were like, yo. We need that energy on this show. And I was actually an avid watcher of Street Journal. Is it? And when I got the call to do that, I was very happy. So that's when I came to Joburg 2006. And then it's been a, an onslaught of, yeah. of shows. Your recent show that I like is Vusu Daso. Oh, yeah, I that was that dope. Show, man. That was dope. I, mean, I was actually mad I never did the first season. Oh, yeah? I didn't understand why I didn't do it. Sometimes you never understand with these companies how they make their decisions. Yeah. But uh, the, the third season was was really really dope uh shout outs to the people that made that happen me and my baby mama love that show always with yeah. Dude. yeah man it, really, cool, it man. really is cool man for our kids to yeah. be able to do such a thing and look at the the names that have come mm. out of it you know mm, mm. shane manu world star i'm still waiting for flex rabanyan to really take his position in this game but it's that whole syndrome of whoever wins you know that whole thing yeah i know exactly what you mean yeah. i know exactly what you mean Yo, explain to me what is that thing Vel? It's, the, it's, wins? it's just a jinx it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the winner's jinx you know mm. because what happens when someone wins a competition they get all this publicity and they they they, they really neglect the hustle mm. and the person that doesn't which win which is the true essence of why they got there exactly mm. even um 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 i was talking to celeste Ndoli, the comedian yeah she was telling me the story of fanta so you think you're funny her and pop pops never won she was number Three and Pop Pops was number two. The lady that won is nowhere to be found. And don't know her name. One's killing it. I don't even know her name. Do you know her name? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. You know? So exactly, it's yeah. that jinx, my nigga. Uh, one thing that that I love about you, dog, is like when you view life in a different lens to everybody else, you know. And I like that about you, man, because I like people that have different opinions from what is the norm, you know. Showcase. Well, where do you think you got that from, right? Uh, I'm a very spiritual person. Mm. I always uh, have grown up in a, a very spiritual and cultural household. My mom's Christian, Roman Catholic. My dad is just cultural. And even though I grew up in PE, the way they raised us was so free. Mm. They allowed us to make up our own minds. They allowed us to make mistakes. They allowed us to develop our characters. And that's definitely where I get it from. And also, I think as a guy... I'm a bit more highly emotionally intelligent mm. because I grew up with three sisters and I didn't grow up with dudes. Mm. So a lot of things sometimes when I see dudes and the way they, they see things is very testosterone driven. Um, and I never had that because mm. women definitely have a certain way of viewing life. They are life givers. So obviously the maternal instinct makes them see the real in stuff. And I definitely adopted that from my mother and then my three sisters. So they, at any given time, there were four women in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely, that I, I, I have to, I have to, have to. I'm sure it was crazy when it was that time of the month. That's crazy because I never, ever experienced that. <laughs> I only it, knew bro. about periods when I started dating a girl. <laughs> like, but how come when I'm home, I never get through this? And you must understand that with women, Periods when they live together, they sink. Yeah, they yeah. have them at the same time. Yeah. But I never, I never even saw a tampon or a pad, guys. The thing is, you're not smashing your sister. That's why you see. I get you, but I mean, I, I, the stuff I have to see it. Yeah, the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, I mean, sometimes the, the stuff doesn't get flushed properly. <laughs> I never even saw that. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I actually, when I was older, I went to them. I'm like, guys, you guys can keep a damn secret. Yeah, like, yeah. Y'all never told me about this st- until I started waxing girls. Well, uh, do you think uh, the, the 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 weed that you consume 
has to do with like how you think because I, I don't smoke weed that much, mm. but whenever I do, like I just feel yeah, I, I feel like in touch with the yeah. world. Like I see things differently, yeah. but then I get paranoid, and that's when I stop. I, feel you. <laughs> I never get paranoid. Yeah, the weed definitely has an effect culturally when my dad tells me what it's about and what it does. And also now Your knowing, dad schooled you on weed Yeah man, I smoked my first blunt with my dad You kidding Yeah man Fucking hell So I never saw it as a taboo Yeah That's why I came in very open about it as yeah, well You yeah, know yeah, yeah. And so Even now When I when I research the THC And what uh, what the, the chemical components of weed mm. You know And what it does to your body I also take mushrooms And acid Mushrooms Yeah those things are amazing what? Psychedelics, not in the stupid like mushrooms and acid. You can't take going to the club. Mm -hmm. I know some people do those things, but it's things that you take in nature. My dude, it will change your life. No you way. I'm telling you, G. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Like mushrooms, if you even hear a person's voice, you you not you just want to hear wind. You want to hear the sea, and you want to look at sunlight and trees. You take them in the forest. You take them in the beach, and you just. You, my nigga. I thought the, like heavy drugs. They're not even drugs. Yeah. They're not even addictive. Yeah. You can't take mushrooms today and take mushrooms again tomorrow. Mm, mm. And the, I mean, the high, it's not even a high. I call it a state of consciousness. Mm. It, 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 uh, it lasts for hours, like eight hours. Because I remember a few friends of mine, um, some white boys, mm. they're into mushrooms, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like four of them. They're like, yo, dude, uh, we're about to do some mushrooms. I'm like, I know me, I don't fuck around with that shit. Sure. You know? They're like, yo, dude, please can you leave because you're going to fuck up with our high. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you with mushrooms, you're very susceptible to energies. For me, when I take mushrooms, I don't want to see a human mm. and I don't want to hear a human's voice because you can, you can hear the evil. What? I'm serious. You can hear if, if this person is evil. You, if I sit next to a human being, I can feel the, the energy. energy and the vibe. Yeah, and that's when like being around nature, nature is the most holy thing on this earth. Like trees, flowers, the wind, water, rivers, all these things. Because they don't drink. They don't smoke. They don't have they don't have sex. They mm. not they not um they have a life force that is not um perverted yeah. by life. It's a life force that still is a, that's why being close to nature raises your frequency. Hmm. Because these things are animals. They are exactly as God made them. That life force isn't perturbed by the food they eat, hmm. by the drinking of the liquor. It's organic. It's, or, it's, it's organic as it was mm. back then. Mm. I mean, trees, a, a tree can be out here for a thousand years. It can't speak, but the knowledge of that tree is in there, mm. and you can access that knowledge. You can access information in sunlight. You can access information in the world. It's all a system of information Shit, and frequencies. Dude. You make me want to do mushrooms, bro. We should. <laughs> We definitely should. I, know, I can't even handle weed, dog. Ah, you, don't worry. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> uh, what else have you done? You've done acid? I've, I've done, done acid. Acid. So oh, acid is amazing. How is that like? Same thing, like mushrooms on a trillion. Mm. I was scared at first to Tell do Tell me about acid. the first time you did it. The first time I did acid, I literally saw God. The first time I no saw way. Shows, I saw Scoop. God. I actually tweeted that. I was in Kirstenbosch in Cape Town. And I took him and I walked up. I kid you not, bro. I just, the sun was shining through the trees and there was a river like flowing underneath me and I was with people and I literally told these people, guys, I can feel and I can see God and I, I cried. Wow. You know, I laid out on the floor and I just cried because I could see and feel how I've been distant from a true life force wow. that wants nothing to do but to take care of me. You know, and it changed my life. Like I totally changed the way I think, the way I eat, and everything else that I do mm. after that experience. I was always scared of acid mm. because you know, having a bad trip, you people you hear that people have jumped out of windows mm. or they've you know had car accidents and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I did get the guts to do it, and apparently, depending on the acid that you take, sometimes it stays in your vertebrae, in your in your in your, in your system, and it can. Come back and trigger you, yeah. but uh, while well, you're on air, I can never say. <laughs> I can never, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. And then, and then, what about like coke and stuff? What's I've the never difference? done coke. What's the difference between coke and acid? I've never done coke. Mm. Um, 
Though I've never done coke, I've never done pills. Mm. I've Heroin. tried ecstasy. Mm. Yeah. Um I've tried MDMA, mm. which were great for sex. Mm. Like as, when I wanted when I was dealing with like if I meet a girl that is like totally dope and I just wanted to make an impression on her sexually, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I did do that once or twice. But that's but, like for when you clubbing, because most of yeah, these kids yeah, like yeah. a truth in them, they're all popping yeah, that shit. Yeah, but I never used it for clubbing because I've already got so much energy. Mm -hmm. I really used it to fuck the girl and make her like remember me. <laughs> like, damn, nigga, where did, where did you get that? <laughs> so, but I, I just didn't agree with me. Um, and so two times was enough. Yeah. And it was all in Durban. Because you know Durban mm. is yeah, that probably, place. Yeah, yeah. Um, but cocaine, I've never done cocaine. And everybody thinks I've done I've done coke. Yeah. Apparently cocaine is like an ego drug. Mm. Um, so and that is a drug. Mm. You know. Mm. With other the psychedelics, they're really worshipping tools. Yeah. They're tools that are, some almost take mushrooms, they put them in there. You fucking kidding? Yeah, shamans, red uh, red Indians, shamans use it a lot. There's something else called DMT. Which is the substance that gets released from your brain when you die? It's the substance that allows you to have that flash of your life in your in your mind. Yeah. So DMT is that, but it's a root actually. All the every all of these things are actually existent in the world already. Mm. It's just that you take them from the earth with the plants, mm. and then they imbalance. Even cocaine is a plant. Yeah, it's a plant. The, yeah, it's yeah. a poppy leaf. So it used to be in Coca Cola in the beginning. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. So there's there's um there's that, and there's uh, another one called ayahuasca. These are things that like will open up your mind and it will let Fuck you see the world. Me. And this is why the American government was adamant that people mustn't take these things. Because after you take these things, you see the fuckery mm. in the shit they're doing to us. And they don't want you to see they that. They don't want you to see that. Yeah. They don't want you to see that. Because my thing is, if they don't want drugs so bad, why don't they just regulate them? And which they're doing now, they're getting money from this weed. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, so even the weed, the weed they're doing now is drugs. All the fertilizers, all the, the things to strengthen it. I've stopped smoking higher grade, uh, indoor, grown with lights weed. And I'm starting to go back to organic mm. greenhouse weed. Because uh, my dad was like, it's not good, this weed. It, it actually does the opposite of what it's supposed to do. Because it's got so many chemicals. And it's not supposed to be like that. My here's my thing with all these drugs, right? Why I'm scared to do them? Because mm. um, like my only drug is alcohol. Like, yeah, I fucks with alcohol. Sure, uh, but with alcohol, even when I'm drunk at times, I feel like I'm still you in can control. control. I yeah. can control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But when I'm high, like it just takes me to a place where I don't want to go, bro. Like I feel I don't feel in control. Mm -hmm. So I'm scared. Like, I love not being in control. I love free falling. You know, I love floating. And that's why I loved weed, because I just felt like I was literally in my body, in my mind, just going to every corner, like, oh, wow, what's that? Okay. <laughs> that's how I feel when I'm stoned. Yeah. And I used it a lot to, to plan my movements in order to get to where I am. For real? I, used, I, I would smoke, then get ideas and write them down and how I would dress, mm -hmm. how to separate myself aesthetically, how to separate myself with my speech. I used weed a lot in my early days so I could map out a way to be different from everybody else. Mm, which you've done that to the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. And I still... Uh, and now I actually do smoke. Smoke less than I used to. How, how, many, I, how many blunts do you smoke a week? A week. I was Probably a day is about six. Shit. Six joints a day. That's more joints than me in a year, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do six months. I mean, yeah, 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 I love, I love weed. I really wow. do. I actually am smoking less now mm. because I don't need to solve as many things mm. now. You content? Yeah, mm. yeah, I really am. But I definitely am looking to go on my next mushroom trip very, very soon. And I want to do it in Port Elizabeth, where I'm from. I've never taken them there. Yeah, I've taken them in Durban. I've taken them in Cape Town. But I definitely want to do it in Port Elizabeth. What What other drugs are nice with sex? I don't know. Mm. I've only I've only tried MDMA and ecstasy. I mm. mean, everybody will tell you that those things are amazing. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. For sex. Shit, man, I feel like I've been missing out, dude. There's a whole <laughs> other world. <laughs> there is a whole other world out there. <laughs> but you don't want to... I mean, the drug shit, I really don't condone it. Mm. I'm really not for it. Yeah. Especially with the pills and stuff. Um, and also the lean. I, uh, I, I drank lean once and I literally... Fainted. What? Like, it was the one time that I tried it because of my curious ass mind. Mm. And I literally fainted. And I was like, I'm never doing this shit. It's not again. for you. Definitely no. not. Mm. You know? Um, so drugs, no. But do, do, do your natural stuff. Do your, do your psychedelics. Craziest shit that's ever happened while you were high? 
Like you're like, what the fuck is this? Apart from meeting God. Yeah, that's that was it, man. Yeah. It was meeting God. Mm. That was it. I still remember that day pretty clearly. And I actually went on my tweet and I said, guys, I took mushrooms today and I literally saw God. Then I understood why they didn't want us to, to take this shit, you know? Did you read the comments? What were people saying in the comments? Ah, you know people, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it, what's it, what's it, what's it? <laughs> you know people. <laughs> anyway, cool, man. Listen, yeah. uh, let's talk about hip-hop, dude. Everybody yes, knows you love hip-hop. What did yes, you sir. first love in uh, hip-hop? What did you first fall in love with it? I was in primary school. Mm. We were on a bus because all the kids had to take the same bus. And um, Black privilege. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my sister, my middle sister, Azola, mm. um, she was in high school. And so the high school people sat at the back and we were sitting in the front, the primary school kids. But I also have a cousin. His name is Slice. So he's actually a radio jock on Mshobo Wenene as we speak. So Lomjita had an LP in his hand. Yeah. So I uh, always used to please see describe what an LP is for a vinyl, you know, my two thousand, <laughs> a vinyl, the big square thing, guys, that gets played with a needle, that thing. I, we will, you'll, he'll cut away to to a vinyl uh, in the interview. So this, so I always were, I was used to the vinyls because my dad, I saw them with my father, and I was always interested in the artwork of vinyls as well. But my dad's artwork, uh, my dad's vinyls, was obviously mature people. So when I saw my cousin, Uslaiso, holding this vinyl, it had this guy with a kangaroo hat with rings and chains and a tracksuit. And it was LL Cool J. Wow. Mama said, knock you yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. At that time, I didn't know. But then I was like, but my, dad's, my dad has these things, but old people are on the covers. Mm. Who's this young guy? Mm. And now that I th- now now that I know he was 16 at the time. I remember that cover. You know what I mean? Wasn't it red? Something? It was red. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, yo, then they, he walked me home because I was so interested in this thing. And I said to him, I want to play it and hear it. So then we played it. And that was the first time I was like, Mama said, knock you out. Oh, my nine is easy to load. Hey. Oh, damn it. I was like, yo, I'm yep. The bug yeah. bit me, and ever since then, I've been on hip hop. Were you high or were you sober? When I was in primary school, I only touched weed. Uh, my first time I smoked was when you know, when uh, Tosa niggas go to the bush, uh, uh. and then that's the day you're going out. Oh, the bush. Boom. so the day before, you don't sleep. Mm. So the day before, my dad, so was you've been there, to the mountains, I've been to the mountains, yeah. and that's what you're in the club, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> my dick, pretty. <laughs> Peel back, <laughs> top off. You understand me? <laughs> so yeah. that's when that's when I that's when I smoked for the first time with my dad before Umpomo, and then I knew that I was gonna do this forever. Then I didn't smoke for a long time, so I was like eighteen then. Then I didn't smoke for a long time, and I only touched weed again when I was like twenty three. So here's this LL Cool J guy. You're vibing, mm. and then what happens? Where does it take you from there? And then. And then I was like, oh, shit, what is this? So Slicer, who was an avid hip-hop guy at the time, was like, I got a lot more of this shit if you're mm. into it. Mm. Then N.W.A. came my way. Mm. And I was so fascinated about these guys saying, bitch, fuck, ho. Who S- made N.W.A.? Uh, it was literally Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, bro. Nah, but the, the guy red. that put the attitude in those mm. niggas was Easy e mm, mm. with that voice of his mm. and he actually lived the life mm, mm, you know mm, what i mean mm, mm. the the words were written for him but he lived mm. the fucking life mm, mm. um so after nwa i was like god damn this is it was better than watching an action movie wow you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and what i loved about hip hop because at the time in south africa you never saw successful black men mm. so you saw all this gold the dress code, the cars, the cars. And the You're like, man, I want some of this in my life, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then after that, DMX came along, Tupac before DMX, <sighs> you know. Oh man, that's it, when I was starting to get introduced my to hip hop. Man, Tupac. that shit changed my first song I ever life, heard was bro. "Dear Mama." Dear Mama, yeah, that changed my life, bro. Yeah. I was like, damn, this guy is amazing. Yeah, is amazing. And then locally, locally. I was a huge fan of Mischief. Mm. I remember seeing Mischief for the first time and I was like, damn, this nigga is nice. I was a huge fan of Double HP. Yeah. You know, I was a huge fan 
of proverb. Ah. I remember I was in Letter Durban. to my ex. My dude, I was remember when you used to compete in the in the rhyme battles when Fat Joe was still doing the drive show on yeah, Metro yeah, FM. Yeah. I was in tertiary at the time uh, doing basketball. So I used to be at the gym trying to get bulkier because I was such a small guy. And that's when I first heard proverb. They used to play that show, uh, Yaga Fat Joe, on the regular. And he used to have the rap battle where if he won, he'd stay on and take on the next contender. Yeah. And proverb stayed on for like six Shit. six weeks if I, if it's not six months you know this guy was killing it and yeah. that's when he got the job then he came to Joburg mm. and then he got a job at at Metro FM as well yeah. started producing I also remember Specs I also remember um Duke some show Duke Singang I definitely I couldn't hear what he was saying but <laughs> fuck I love the acrobatics that he was doing with his tongue you yeah, know and yeah. I love the fact that he was uh, real to his language mm. Uh, I remember the first time I heard Cuesta uh, petting, petting the Ghanaians really daycare. Yeah. I remember that line. Uh, it was great. And also Tumi, T from the V. Yeah. I remember seeing him in Durban at a place called the Bat Center. And after his show, I was like so mesmerized by this guy. I'm like, how the fuck mm. do you do this? Mm. And then, and he was sitting on a bench, just taking it all in. Uh, de sweaterizing himself, and then I walked up to him like, "Yo, dog, like one day I'm gonna be a good friend of yours just because you do this thing so well, and I admire you." And I always tell him the story because yeah. now we're actually good friends. I emceed his wedding, wow. and he's like, "Yeah, man," and he's like, "Yo," and it, for me, I always knew the power of words, mm. and I always knew the power of thought yeah. because it always happened. Mm. The things I thought always happened. The things I said always happened. Yeah. So shout out to the hip hop artist man Squada Fuck How can we forget Squada camp Yeah Cuckoo function Yeah, yeah. You know the Rao Rao Yeah Damn that shit was crazy I, I got laid Because of Squada camp Hey <laughs> <laughs> Remember I was I think I was at uh, Rancho Remember when YFM Used to do those shows At Rancho mm. During Easter I think mm. And then Squada was on And they played yeah, Tap that ass I remember Girl, I'll tap yeah, that yeah, ass yeah, yeah. I, I was there for that Rancho Is it Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there. So I was with the high and then I'm like, hey. Showcase. <laughs> and you tap. <laughs> Straight up, dog. Nice one. Straight up, man. So how do you think it's evolved from like when you started listening to local hip hop to now? Obviously, we can see that all these guys are making way more money, mm. you know? Mm. It's crazy because when we say it has evolved, I personally don't think it has evolved. Mm. Why is that? Why is that? Tell me why. I think it is hard for a South African hip hop artist to be South African in mm. the hip hop art. And there is a, a double there's 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 you know there's a dichotomy involved because we're obviously influenced by America. Yeah. Godwa Sinawa Mabali way too and we've got our own language. And shout outs to dudes like Abo Cuesta, yeah. shout outs to Abos Java, shout outs to, you know, a lot of the dudes that are kicking it in the vernacular. Uh, I am, I do think we make good music. I do think, though, that it's going to be increasingly hard to maintain a South African identity after your Questas and your Caspers yeah. and your WHPs and your Bounce. It's going to be very hard. I agree. And for me, the identity thing... Which is sad because we've got so much culture, Exactly. Dude. Like, Americans don't have culture, bro. No. They don't have anything. And also, we got to blame the audience. I blame the audience for some of this shit because they... Consume. So, yeah, and they consume. They want to consume the more Americanized yeah. version of everything. Yeah. Um, it's just sad, man. It's really, really sad. And I'm scared. Even for me, I can understand because when I was young, America looked so enticing. It obviously. Did. It did. But it did. the older you get... Because that's what they sold us. Yeah. They sold us a dream. They sold us a dream, On bro. TV, we're watching American TV shows. All the time. All the time. You bro. know? We never so own content. Now that I'm getting older and I've yeah. got a son, yeah. I'm like, yeah. bro, you, you can't be that person. Yeah. You got to be teaching this kid how to be a South African Kosa man. 100%. You understand? And... Um, because without that, we have nothing. We have nothing. We have nothing. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to go down like that. Yeah. And shout out to everybody that's doing anything. I definitely love everybody. I, I know that we need a balance. Mm. We can't have 
too much of one thing. The only thing we can have too much of is our nativity. Yeah. If we are native and we are too much of that, all good. But we are going to be too much American. We are going to lose a lot. Shady and we right, also man. coming with culture. The thing of language is so important because which is the totem pole that closer people have and Zulu people have where all the ceremonies are done even now when you go see a Sangoma your old people your ancestors don't know English mm. you can't say you're my man <laughs> you can't say yo what up ancestors y'all cool y'all chilling out there and I do these things I go talk to a Sangoma yeah. I I I I have had, uh, my dad passed away, he channels through a Sangoma, my grandmother, and they tell me how proud they are watching me walk back to who I really am because it was so hard to reach me because I was not Kosa. I was trying to be something that I wasn't and they could never reach me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Now I know about my tradition. I know about how to slaughter. I know why certain things happen. I know why certain things have to be done. Why do we slaughter that? So... Black people have this thing that makes them brown. It's called melanin. Mm. Melanin is also the substance that makes the soil brown. Mm. Melanin is also in the air. Mm. Melanin is also in water. Melanin also is the first coating of the sperm and the embryo. Wow. Melanin is also the dark matter in space. Shit. Hence why we slaughter, even in the Bible, in Deuteronomy, and I was a preacher for three years as well. Yeah. The Bible in Deuteronomy, the, it's a chapter, it's a book that talks about which animals to eat and how to slaughter. Mm. So these instructions come way, 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 way Before back. I the turn. Old Testament is really the history of black people, to be honest with you. Mm. The New Testament is where the fuckery happens mm. and where the Roman Catholic Church came into being, which mm. is why the Pope and the Vatican are not to be trusted mm. at all. Mm. They perverted everything. Mm. So that's why black people need to slaughter and then the blood goes into the ground and then you pray to the air and then it hits the cosmos. Mm. Then it comes back to you via sunlight. Hence why I was saying there's so much information in mm. sunlight. Mm. Because sunlight, black people, when you're in the sun, vitamin D helps with your melanin. Mm. White people can't be in the sun for too long. They get skin cancer. Mm. These are the crazy shits that we don't look at and go, hmm, no wonder something's odd here. Mm. No wonder there's a certain race that's really trying to demean me us, yeah, and really trying not to find me, not to find my greatness, yeah. Because if know? you find our greatness, it's over. It is it, fucking. It, it's, and it's I late. can tell you now, dog. Like for me, anybody who's coming up against me, you are in trouble, black or white. The amount of information that I have now, the amount of proof of knowledge that I have now is tremendous and i can i can see that a lot of people are seeing it in my life because a lot of people are saying yo man we are seeing you change we are seeing you becoming this person we always knew you share could some be, of that knowledge just a little but bit you, the melanin part is big yeah i like that um i never knew that you know what i mean yeah, yeah. that's it's huge mm. um and melanin is more than just a color it's really something that dances to the frequency of the universe i went to kurumani I went to go see, I have not told anybody this, mm. but I might as well tell you guys now. Myself, I pulled Black Coffee along, I pulled Nelson Makamo along, I do my Ngogolo. We went to go see Credo Mutwa. That was also amazing, mm. the amount of knowledge that he shared with us, uh, being in his sixth stage as well. So the melanin, it's, it's really a frequency. So the earth doesn't understand language. Mm. The earth only understands frequency. Mm, and That's vibes. why your thoughts are very important. Jeez. Your thoughts become things. Mm. There's a saying in Vanak, umlomo uyadala. Then the secret comes along years later and goes, yeah, say it into existence. Mm. These are true, honest things. And everything that exists, exists that, that white, white people, people have formed, formed religion, law, mm. d uh, 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 democracy, democracy, everything that exists, was started by us. We were the first people. So everything you see was jacked from you. Mm. There's no such a thing that black people couldn't swim. But they've taken this knowledge, then they've turned it mm. so much. Even with religion, 
They removed your ancestors mm, mm. and say you mustn't talk to your ancestors. Mm. Your ancestors are there, just like you have angels. You do have ancestors as well. Mm. But now, and then they've changed the color of this person that you're praying to. Then you're also praying to him in English. Mm. So, yes, you're doing the right thing. Yes, you're living in a good way. The only law that you're actually tapping into is the law of karma. Because of you not obeying all these Christian laws, you're not doing anything bad. So, yes, good will find you. But there's a supernaturalness inside you as a black person that you're not tapping into. Wow. Um, another thing, um, I mean, sex. Mm. Hip hop fucked me up so much that I really thought I wanted to fuck every girl in the world. Yes, yeah, same here. You know what I mean? I've but, tried, but I couldn't finish uh, you know it. Mean? But when I learned later how I damaged my energy and myself. By, by listening and trying to become hip-hop. What they did with hip-hop is also fuckery. When they realized the power that hip-hop had. Because when it started, it was a movement to build black people and build black yeah. economy and build black uh, liberty. Yes, yes. But then when the Jews and the record company and record industry came into it, they made it gangster. Now it's selling drugs. Mm. Now it's... Because they know... And how many times have you heard that, that phrase sex sells? You know what I'm saying? Mm, mm. Those, Who created are, that? Who coined that? You get what I'm saying? It's the record company. Yeah, exactly. It's the entertainment yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. Um, yo, and the, I mean, Hollywood is also a big part of it. Do you know that the word Hollywood, it's actually a tree. A holly tree is, it's, that's make, it's, it's, used to make the wands of witches and wizards. Mm. So hence, they're casting spells with these movies. Shit. This is real shit. Yeah, and people don't understand why they are in the positions that they are in and why they can't solve their fucking problems is because they are being bamboozled in the worst fucking way. The truth is there. It's on the internet. But motherfuckers don't know where to look. And the truth is so hard to take in sometimes. And you have to change the way you're living. Wow. You know? Uh, Credo Muta was saying, like, black people, if you had to trace your, your, your lineage, because as, uh, uh, like, for me, Mkosa, Koko is in the is Duko. Is Duko is all the other names and all the other people that came before you. So, Dilipele, Ulanga, Umafu, Utunta, Ukuboni, Untabezita, Ilanga, Lokulunga, Akumyama Kandiko, Diamba Nabato Bemali. So what this now listen to this. Mm. In my name, Bele is a name. Langa is the sun. Mafu is the sky and clouds. Unta is a name, but it, I it's I think it's like a mountain top, a peak. Ndabezita is a huge mountainous range. That you can't see over or walk around. In Dabezita. It's also the greeting that's used for the Zulu king. Mm. Uh, the son of righteousness. It is never dark when you are around. This is in my name. So if you don't know yourself, mm. you can't mm. access this knowledge. No, you can't. So whenever I'm in a fuck up position, I just go say my name. Mm. And I'm like, my nigga, you got this shit. You know what I'm saying? Wamba. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, no, 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 is I always do my own will. I don't need anybody else's go ahead. Anybody say so. I roll with people that love to be exalted. And they're always rolling with the doctors of money. Yo, this is in my name. And every person, black guy, has this. But if you're going to try to be American, you're never going to be able to access that. So every oh, they time... They don't have that. No, they don't. They wish they did. Yeah. Every time I pray, those are the things I have to mention first. And then after that, I have to go... Now this is me saying where my, I come from my dad, who comes from this, the name of his father. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? You're tracing back the lineage. And it even stretches far back um, after Ngwekazi. There's more. And then I have to go to my mother's side. Mm. Um, 
from Somerset East. This, and even when you go see a Sangoma, they never tell you about your future. They're always telling you about what you need to fix in your mm. past. Because your past is so important. Mm. So these are the big shits about, about, about life, man, you know? Fuck and enough. I was saying that to say this. Credo was saying he loved me doing that. And also being that I'm a young kid, you know, and I'm so interested in culture. And he's like, do you know that if you if you knew all the names and you trace them back, it would lead straight up to Kamata, who is the first god. Wow. That's the name of God in Kosa is Kamata. Mm. He's like, your lineage would go all the way up to the Josephs in the Bible, the Moseses, all these people. Because black people... In essence, we all related. Yes, yes, yes. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So you're saying, how did, um, how fucked up is sex? What are you saying about sex? Sex is a big thing, man. Yeah. Energy, energy. energy. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's so a, I'm transferring energy. And you're getting some. Mm. So maybe a girl is sleeping with somebody that's not cool. Mm. It's the most sacred thing ever. And that's why they're trying to make it to be this thing that is frivolous. This shit of threesomes. You know, I, I love threesomes. You know what I'm saying? But that shit ain't cool. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because imtaka, it's a very, sex is a very sacred thing, my nigga. For real, dog. Yeah, it's very sacred, bro. I mean, it, it comes, it brings life, dog. Hmm. Anything that brings life is fucking amazing and sacred. It's not, so, masturbation is not like, it's not cool. Mm. You know what I mean? What's wrong with masturbation? When you masturbate, do you know that the thoughts you have in your mind go all the way down and those thoughts affect your sperm? So if you're watching porn, yeah. your sperm, you're perverting it. And then you're masturbating and then you're just chucking it out there. Whereas if you are in love with someone, connecting with someone, your sperm can feel that and it becomes a non-toxic sperm. What if it's a video that I made, my own porn? Um, it's just masturbation is, you, you know what? Because if you really understood the life juice that is semen, you don't want to spill liquor, do you? Mm. Why would you spill life juice mm. for just the sake of spilling it? No, but as a man, sometimes you got to yank one out, bro. That's what you've been told, Galogo, mm. Mac G. Mm. And that's what you want to do mm. because... Life is two things. There's the carnal side, mm. which is flesh. Mm. Then mm. there's the spiritual side. Mm. The carnal side always wants to fulfill itself. But fulfilling yourself is not what you were put here for. But you now are living in a world where they're telling you it's all about fulfilling your needs. Obey your thirsts. And it's, life is not about that. Life is about restraint. Life is about fasting from your thirst. Life is about swimming in your soul and not indulging in your flesh. Shit. Hey, you got me all fucked up, dog. Trust me, but I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, bro. Dude, I thought I was going to come here and talk about your radio show. <laughs> talk about your TV I'm with show. you, dog. Like, you. this shit is tough, man. It, it's tough. And I'm the kind of person when I, if I know something mm. and I know that it's to, tr is to be true, it's hard for me to neglect it. It's hard for me to not walk in because Dililanga look lunga. I have to follow my name. That's why we're giving the names that we are given as black folk. We live up to our names. We don't have names with no meaning. Hmm. And everything that we need, us black people are never going to get right until we go back to those core values. Yeah. yeah. I saw the slung. Yeah. Nothing is going to happen. Our politics are not going to be right. Our families are not going to be right. It's never going to be okay with us until we acknowledge the fact that we have strayed so profusely far from the path. Fuck now. Dude, I don't even have a question anymore, bro. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know? That is crazy. It's crazy, my nigga. It's really, really crazy. And also having a son, you know, realizing that my dad gave me this knowledge. I have to pass it down. Yeah, you gotta, yeah what are you going to teach him? You know what I'm saying? Same thing, yeah. my nigga. I'm already on it, you know? Yeah. I'm already telling my nephews about these things. I'm sending them books. I'm giving them things to read, you know? Letting them know about all When, when you tell people this, like what you just told me, now, do people think you're crazy? Or like I don't talk to people about these mm. things. So I'll tweet it on my timeline. Mm. Um, I'll, Why I'll, don't you, though? Because people are the way they are. Mm. And if you tell them, 
it's different. But if you show them by living ah. it. I, also telling them it's like it's more preachy and Christian like mm, and I don't right. like that yeah I also don't like that so too so they yeah. must be attracted to it because they're like damn dog like you really really like living a different life and it's working out what are you on and then, and then you, mm, more, you unravel for them so that's my big part of it but I you know I'm on Insta I'm, I'm live and like uh, talking about shit and like showing them the books that I'm reading so so yeah, I don't like talking about it much because I I want them to to see it in my life. Yeah. So you also stop masturbating, dog? No, I still masturbate. Oh, okay. But I mean, I, I'm not perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I try very hard not to. Mm, it's tough. Man. It's tough. I mean, Cape Town. I was in Cape Town. Now my girl wasn't around. Mm. I porn hubbed it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I porn hubbed it. I yanked one out. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, you changed your eating habits, yeah? Yeah, I, I changed it, man. I stopped eating meat. Stopped eating dairy. I don't think I can do that, bro. I, I, hear, I hear everything that you're saying. Mm. For me, I think that would be tough, man. McG, what the fuck isn't tough that's worthwhile, brother? Grow out of this bullshit. Mm. You know, what isn't tough, dog? What isn't tough? Mm. You know what I mean? So, if you know, if you realize... See, with the food... One. Milk. We are the only mammals that consume another mammal's milk. We say for the point of growing bones, but we fully developed and we're still drinking cow's milk. Mm. A cow will not drink chicken's milk, mm. even if it is a calf. Mm. That's one. Two, they tell you to eat meat for protein. The strongest animals, elephant, baboon and apes, even cows, they eat grass. Mm. And then you're going to go kill the animal. You're getting actually... A watered down version of the protein. Mm. Thirdly, the way they are making meat these days, because the population on the earth is more, yeah. they need to now mm. satisfy mm. this meat need, right? Yeah. But you know what they're doing? They're injecting them with steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The calf is is born immediately. They inject them with steroids. So instead of waiting seven years for this calf to actually reproduce again, it now gets seven years in three years. Mm. Because of these steroids, yeah. so that fucks up the meat. Yeah, and then, they just want to meet demand. Yeah, you know? and then you go eat that water. There's something in your brain called a pineal gland. It's actually the third eye. Egyptians knew this. That eye of Egypt, actually, if you cut, if you cross section your brain, you can see that eye inside your brain, and that's where the pineal gland is. Mm. Now they. They put fluoride, which is a byproduct of all this chemical bullshit. They put fluoride in our water. They put fluoride in our toothpaste. Do you know what fluoride does? It calcifies. Inside pineal gland, and your pineal gland is your third eye. They're doing this shit on purpose. Fuck me. They are doing, and that's why niggas want to do the right thing, but they don't know. They don't have the guts. They don't have, because somebody is busy Fucking with you in the worst way. Sure. So I changed, man. I, you know, the information definitely changed me. And I, ever since then, bro, you like... you got information and you choose to still continue, you know, it's, it's a different story. You yes, know? sir. Yes, sir. But we don't, we're not privy to this information. Most... It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on the tube. It's on... It depends on the accounts you follow yeah, as yeah, well, you know? Yeah. So, my nigga, it's crazy. Shit, dude, we could chat about this the whole day. But the whole sadly, day. I got sixty seconds left, dude. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Uh, you TV production? You still? Yeah. You still with? Uh... No, I am not. Oh, you're not. Okay, no, cool. Not. Uh, we'll talk about that. You gotta no come doubt. back, dude. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko.